But it, it didn't take long um, before my passion for the gospel and, and my passion to see lost men and women saved um, s- started to rub against or collide with the church. And, and so it wasn't very long, and, and I, I won't I, I can give you dozens and dozens of stories, but, but really one that kind of broke the camel's back where I decided if I was going to do this, I wasn't going to do it as a churchman because the church, more often than not, was an enemy of conversion and not its friend. I'll give you an example. Um, this turn in me, this break in me happened that God has been just disciplining me on ever since. Uh, occurred my freshman year of college when um, I randomly sat next to a, I'm a freshman in college, I'm sitting next to a 26-year-old single mother who's coming back to school to try to get a degree, never been to church, didn't know much about Jesus, didn't know, and so we began this ongoing dialogue uh, about the grace and mercy of Christ in the cross. And so um, me and some of my crew go over to her house and babysit her daughter. She's actually in an extramarital affair at the time with a married man. And, and so we would talk through that, the wisdom in that. Um, they, th- this is the relationship we had, just kind of serving her and trying to explain to her spiritual things. A friend of mine was playing at a church in the area, and, and so I asked her to come. He was a musician, um, and so I said, hey, a good friend of mine's in a band, he's playing. Um, what, why, don't you come, what, why don't you come hear him? And, and so she agreed, she thought it would be a concert. I knew better, it was shady, it was excellent. And um, she came with me and, and we listened to Robbie play and, and he was tremendous, just a real anointed guy. And then the, the minister got up and he said, today I wanna to talk to you about sex. And so I immediately go, uh oh, this could be a problem. And, and he took a red rose and he smelled it and he showed how pretty it was and then he threw it out into the crowd. He goes, everybody needs to smell this. There's about a thousand of us there, almost all of us college and high school. Smell the rose, I want you to smell it, I want you to touch it, I want you to see the texture in it. Do it, do it, and I'm gonna teach. And, and then he began what honestly, up until this day, and this might have to do with my heart, I don't, I'm still wrestling, um, was one of the worst, most horrific handlings of what sex is and what it isn't that I ever sat through. It was fear-mongering at, the, at its best. It was, um, you don't want syphilis, do you? And everybody's smiling and having a good time until there's herpes on your lip, and you, right? And so I'm just thinking with Kim beside me, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and then as it wraps up, he goes, where's my, where's my rose? Where, where, where is it? Where's, where's my rose? And you know, some kid came up, the rose is just completely jacked up, it's broken, the things are off, the petals are broken, and, and he lifts it up in his big crescendo, I mean, his point is to hold up that rose and go, now who would want this? Who would want this rose? And I remember feeling anger, like real, legitimate, I want to hurt him, anger, and it was all I could do not to scream out, Jesus wants the rose! That's the point of the gospel, that Jesus wants the rose that he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Christ won. You're not even teaching the basics of our faith. 